On this first example, guys, what we're going to look at is I actually kind of wrote these all high. Um, so we have a piecewise function. If you guys remember last class period, what we did is we kind of talked about you know, taking multiple equations or functions and kind of throwing them together on the same coordinate grid, but then restricting their domain. Right? And that's basically what we're asking here. To graph these, we basically have two equations or two functions that we need to graph. So the first one is we have y equals negative 1 over x. And we have to be able to graph y equals ln of x plus 1. Now, some of you took me up on my offer when I said, hey, guys, remember those 12 basic, basic transformation or functions? You're going to need to know those for your quiz, right? Some people took me up on that. Some people did not, which, we, again, we'll look at when we pass back the quizzes. But again, guys, to graph these, this is just understanding your basic graphs, right? The I'm going to look at the reciprocal. I'm going, to, I'm going to graph the parent graph and then apply the transformations. So the parent graph of the reciprocal function looks like this. Okay, And now let's go and graph this. So if I see the negative, the negative is up top. But it actually doesn't matter, guys, if you reflect this about the x-axis or y-axis, right? Doesn't matter. It's still going to be the same. It's the same reflection. So anyways, th let's say this is a reflection about the x-axis. So therefore, that's up there and that's down there. So now the graph looks like this. <coughs> yes? Agreed? OK. But then now we look at the domain restrictions. Now we got to restrict the graph based on its domain. This says only graph this for when x is less than 0, meaning for only negative values. So we say, well, when is x negative? x is only negative over here. So that means this graph is graphed when x is positive, which is not within the domain restriction. So we're just going to erase it. Now we go to the next one, the ln function. So we got to make sure we remember ln. Looks like that has a x-intercept at y comma or 1 comma 0. Sorry, has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And then we understand, OK, well, what is that transformation? The transformation is just moving that up one, right? So we literally just go up one over one. And then we re-scratch the graph. Now, in this one, it says only graph this function for x values greater than 0. Well, that's nice because the graph is already for all positive values, right? So we're good. So then we are done. And you guys can see that, um, let's actually continue this. This is what I asked. But you guys can see that this is discontinuous at x equals 0, right? And the type of discontinuity is a non-removable, uh, infinite discount. It could be labeled as non-removable discontinuity. It could be labeled as an infinite discontinuity. Or we could say there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, right? Because both parent functions have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. 